Hey Kyle, how's your online school going? Colors. You learning colors? Yes. Hey, can you say this and tell me what was missing? Aren't you supposed to be somewhere? Perfect. Where? I'm supposed to be at church, babe. I'm supposed to be there 30 minutes. Go, 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 go. Man, I am late. Alright, keep changing till the end. Home Alone, right? I remember that movie. Yeah, Home Alone. Why are we still running out of toilet paper? Check. 
check it twice. Ho, 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 ho. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. Take my money, take my soul, take every little thing I And roll. Ho, 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 ho. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. Take my money, take my soul, take every little thing I own. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. I want to rock and roll. Ho, 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 ho. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. Take my money, take my soul, take every little thing I own. All I want for Christmas is a rock show. All I want for Christmas is a Well, hey, everybody who is online, on Facebook, YouTube, on our website, everyone who is over in our Legacy Theater, and to all of you here, how are we doing tonight? Man, I am so glad that you are with us for our annual Christmas services. We know that Christmas looks a little bit different, a rock show. Brent running in a little bit late, and you didn't trip. That was really good. I appreciate that. Uh, the 3D little action. We're glad you're with us. For you guys who are online, make sure to comment, invite some friends with you to be a part uh, of Christmas here at Forefront. And I know, like we mentioned before, that Christmas is a little different. As we celebrate, things look different, feel different, and that is absolutely okay. But the thing that we really want to drill down on and remember more than anything else is the hope and joy that comes around this time of year to be able to celebrate and know that God is with us, that he sent his son Jesus so that we could experience love and love to the full. And so tonight, we are going to sing some exciting new Christmas songs. We're going to sing some traditional songs. We're going to look at the story of Jesus. And speaking of which, uh, I know that you and I need to be reminded from time to time in the chaos of the Christmas season of gifts and setting things up and family about what the Christmas season is truly all about. And so why don't we take a moment and be reminded of that amazing truth when light came into the world. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a king wearing a magnificent crown. No, Dad, that's not it. Oh, really? L let me try it again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a powerful, well-trained soldier. No, Dad, you did it again. That's not right. 
okay, uh, how about this? A trendy motivational speaker. No way. A big tech CEO. A movie star. Time traveling cyborg. No, no, none of those are right. The shepherds weren't gonna find any of those. Okay then, little Miss Know It All. What did they find? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, that's right, a baby. Does that even make sense? A, a baby is totally helpless. Yeah, but if Jesus didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. then he would have known what it was like to grow up. Ah, oh, but wait, why did he have to grow up? That's easy, to save us. Ah, well then that means that the best part about Christmas is... The baby. Right, the baby. Oh, well, I guess it's time you get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. No, we're not done with the story. Okay, just a little longer. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is. Hey, Forefront, it is so good to be with you tonight. We're going to sing a couple songs to you and about God, and I'd love to invite you to stand and sing along with us. Breaking through a silence with glory in the highest, the hope of all creation resting in his mother's
Hey, 2020 and uh, has been different for all of us, and this Christmas season for me, I'm sure like many of you, has been no different. And uh, oftentimes when I've struggled over this last year, I've, I've felt like, hey, let me like work harder. Let me like do this better. Let me be, uh, or give everything that I've got to make something happen, to, to bring some more peace to my family or joy to my family. And I think that this season is a great reminder that um, hope and joy aren't found in me, that Jesus is the only place that I can, I can find. And instead of working harder, I get to bring the stuff, the, the hurt, the brokenness, the struggle, I get to bring it to Jesus. And he is a fantastic partner and friend and father. And so I don't know about you tonight, if, that, if you feel like you're carrying a bunch of stuff, but tonight, Jesus, God, he is calling you to lay it before him, inviting you to lay that before him and to find hope and to find joy in him.
to come and see, to come and know you, God, is available for all of us each and every single day and every moment. God, thank you for the gift of hope um, that we celebrate in Jesus today, God. We are thankful that we can have a relationship with you, God, that we can give all of the stuff, all the hurt, all of the brokenness that we can hand it over to you and you are good and kind and faithful to handle that with us. God, thank you for being such a good partner on this journey of faith. God, for being the reason that we can have joy this season. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated.
with the year that has been so difficult for us, having my family join in a room together, all six of us, unlike so many families this year because of what we're going through, brings me such joy and happiness. I don't want the materialistic things to come involved. How many gifts we have underneath the tree for each person. It's, for me, this season, it's about just being content. Um, you know, oftentimes I think we, we miss um, the fact that the way has already been made, that there are already blessings in our lives that, um, and we often, we miss that. For me, it truly did, like, I was able to build a relationship with my own kids. It, it has shown me to not take my own family for granted. Usually when the holidays come, we do all the traveling with the pack up all the kids and the book all the flights and it's usually really hectic and because we can't travel this year, I'm actually really excited that everyone else has to travel to us. And we bought a house, so yay. Uh, the lead up to this Christmas has been uh, good for us because we've been able to spend so much more time with our kids. So instead of being busy with work and all that with our compressed schedule, we're able to spend way more time with the kids. And year has been super hard and it's kind of forced everybody to just stop and kind of take stock in family and community relationships and it's given a realization how quickly things can change and life can be just kind of ripped from you and so I feel like this season is going to be a better season because it's forced us to strip away the busyness and just kind of focus in on what's real and what's true and what matters and maybe not sweat the small stuff so much. Not sweat the small stuff. Uh, man, I think for many of us, that is probably one of the things that we need to remember. Uh, above all, in a year that none of us anticipated when we were sitting in December and celebrating Christmas and counting in the new year, and we're like, this is gonna, I'm gonna be living my best life. Oh, yeah, and then it happened. And I love the fact that we're closing out the year with one of the most beautiful times, Merry Christmas 2020. But I have to revisit that word Mary. If you look it up in the dictionary, Mary means cheerful, lively, and in good spirits. How many of you would say that represents this year? Exactly. Not a single person like, you know what? This year has been absolutely cheerful, lively, and I have been in good spirits the entire time. Every person along the way has had a moment where you're just going, I wish I could have a redo. I wish things could be a little bit different. And so we come to this time of year, and I thought, well, if Mary doesn't really describe this kind of year, well, then what, what does? And so I started doing a little bit of digging, and I found that in the most studied word used to describe 2020 in TV, news, print, and interviews is the word dark. In the year that has been a little bit chaotic, it wasn't Mary that was used to describe the year. It was dark. Now, a uh, show of hands, how many of you do not like the dark? Any, anybody? All right. So quite a few of you, I know that every single one of my girls raise their hand when they, I mean, because the darkness, we want something better and the light is great, but when it's dark, it's a no-go. And at our house, nobody, including myself, likes the dark. Now, our house for us, all of our family lives upstairs. And then the downstairs is just like, you know, the normal living room and kitchen and all that. And when somebody has to go downstairs and get something, it's the, this happens every single time. Hey, I need to go down and get whatever. Who's going to go with me? Who's going to go with me? And everybody's like, I don't want to go down there. I don't want to go down there. And please go with me, go with me. And what my daughters don't know is that there has been something that's been happening until around the Christmas season that I've been asking them to do because I didn't want to go do it because of the dark. And our streetlight 
on our corner has been out for months, like half the year, our street light has been out and it has been dark like is death outside. It was so like our lamp post that's out there gives just a little bit of light from our little driveway one, but the one for the road, it is pitch black and our mailbox is right down by the pitch black. And so I would see the mailman and he'd have his flashing lights coming by and it would be dark and I'd go, hey girls, who wants to go get the mail? And I would ask every time because I didn't want to go out into the dark. And now they know my little secret is out. But you know when I started going out and getting the mail? The moment that Christmas lights started popping up. And everybody in our neighborhood has been like extremely festive. Like people have gotten into the spirit. And I think part of that is we've had a year that we wouldn't describe as merry. We've actually described it as a culture is dark. And what we really wanted was something better. And I heard that time and time again from people coming into the end of this year, going into the next, you know what, Jason, I really want something better. And I think what they were really saying is, I don't want something dark. What I really want is the beauty of the light that shines. Much like in our neighborhood, when you drive through it now, even on our corner, while that lamp post is out, it is absolutely beautiful, all the twinkle lights and everything going on and everything's festive. You see, the light does something that the darkness cannot compete with. It lights it up in such a way that brings beauty and clarity to everything that we encounter. And I'm reminded around this time of what Jesus shared when he talks about the darkness in the light. Over in the New Testament, in the book of John, he shared, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In this Christmas season, if you don't hear anything else, my prayer is that you truly remember and take to heart this truth, that Jesus is better because he is the only one that can light up the darkness in this world and in your life personally. I've watched people this year experience some beautiful moments, celebrated and done some weddings, and those weddings looked a lot different as everyone spaced out and things just felt a little weird. And I've watched as people have brought in new life into the world. During this year, I got to welcome my niece into the world. And I mean, she is just like all cheeks. And it was so cool to watch, but we, it, we took a long time to be able to go and see her in person. But you celebrate these moments and everything is beautiful. That light just brings in something that's amazing. But also there's been some dark moments. And I think for us, in this idea of darkness during this holiday season, what we're asking is, Jesus, bring some light into my life. Bring some light into my family. Bring some moments that just seem and feel beautiful that only you can provide. Jesus, you are truly better. You are better than anything in this world, and you can fight against the darkness in my life and in this place and bring a joy that supersedes all of the chaos that we've experienced in this year. And God, you will sustain me into the next. But here's what we know is that change from light to darkness and from darkness to light can be a little bit overwhelming. When we, you know, go through a situation and things are brought to light or things change, we don't like that a whole lot. It's like if you're a kid and then you get caught getting, you know, doing something wrong, you're like, <gasps> and you just get really freaked out. And what you normally would have done is like backtrack and, uh, 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 and a lot of kids would just lie because they're like, I don't know what to say, but I'm just going to lie because lying sounds way better than getting caught. And so I'm just going to say that yeah, and I'm going to, you see, when the moment that a parent comes in and you were in darkness and a parent, the light comes in, then things change. And when things change, we freak out, which is why even in a year that's dark, that we would describe as a culture, it's so scary to let Jesus into those moments. And, and not just in this year, it happened even in the moment that Jesus was coming into the world. And I want to take a moment to look back at the way 
Jesus' earthly dad described and walked through this moment because he, like you and I, was a little bit freaked out about what was happening. Shared this over in Matthew chapter 1 in the New Testament. Said, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And that's a good excuse there, yeah. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. He was like, yo, yeah, right, the Holy Spirit, yeah, good one. I am going, I don't want to cause you shame, but but I'm I'm gonna have to get out of this. He was terrified of the situation. But after he considered this, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. See, it's that fear, that fear of change when light comes in. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Spirit. She'll give birth to a son And you will give him the name Jesus because he will save people from their sins. You see, in that moment, when when Joseph woke up, he was like, all right, I am going to, to, I'm going to make sure that this happens. I'm going to take Mary. I'm going to walk this out. But when he initially found out about the coming of Jesus, about light entering into the darkness, he was terrified, absolutely terrified. And you and I, in plenty of ways, as we walk through life and family and work and the future and what transpires while this holiday season will usher in a sense of joy, there's also a sense of the unknown. And every one of us have moments of this fear. But I wanna encourage you that in a time when we can be fearful that God is bringing into this world a gift for you and I a gift that we do not have to be scared about in our personal lives and in our hearts and in our families and within this world, that Jesus breaks light through the darkness. And he's the only one that can do that. And that is an absolutely beautiful gift. And and I don't mind gifts. I enjoy gifts. How many of you guys enjoy receiving gifts? You're excited about all you kids. You're excited about Christmas? Five of you are. You're like, I don't know. Am I allowed to talk in church? You are totally allowed to talk in church. What are some of the gifts that you get excited about? You could shout them out. No one's ready for a gift. A doggy? Someone said a doggy. Uh, I think it was one of my kids. No, you are not getting a doggy <laughs> at all. That's going to be a hard pass. Sorry to burst your bubble on that. You're excited for Christmas. That's awesome. Uh, I love uh, techie gifts. Like, I'm just a tech nerd, and I've always, like, I love, like, to me, that's, like, for some of you, you're like, I don't care, like, techie stuff is my thing. But as I've gotten older, the what I've loved about gifts has absolutely changed. Like, now that I'm, well, you don't need to know how old I am. Now that I'm older, I love things that I hated when I was a kid. Like, right now, I love socks. Like socks are wicked awesome. Like I like if I get socks, I'm like, that is so good. Like the feeling, this is how I know I'm old. When I put on a new sock, I'm like, ooh, that's good right there. I love that gift. And the, the person that gives that to me, they know that I enjoy that. But in a year like this year, when it comes to gifts, you know, one of the things that I've loved is being able to give gifts, the gift of time the gift of being able to sit down with someone else, this gift of saying, Jesus has brought this kind of light into my life. And while we very much in many aspects until this year taken for granted being with people, God, I want to hand that off to other people during this holiday season. You know, it's the very same thing that St. Nicholas, yes, that guy, shared. He said, the giver of every good and perfect gift has called upon us to mimic his giving by the love that we share through faith. And the only way that we can bring these gifts is through Jesus himself. See, during a time when we celebrate through the tree and with gifts and sitting around with one another, all of those things are absolutely great. 
but it's the time that we share knowing what is true about life the time that we spend with family. You know, it's interesting as I kind of walked around and as people were coming and sharing, hey, what do you have plans for? Every single person shared when it came down to family. Hey, we're going to FaceTime with family. We're going to Skype with family. We have a family member who has been with us and we're going to share. It was all about just being together and sharing something much greater than the gifts of things. You see, in that presence, that joy, that gift, that we have in our personal lives and throughout this world only comes because of Jesus coming as a baby, but not just staying a baby, that he grew up and lived a perfect life so that you and I could experience life and life to the full. And so I want to challenge you this holiday. Maybe for you, it's taking a step to say, you know what? I want to follow Jesus with every part of my being. I'm going to change the way that I move into the new year. Maybe for you, it's reaching out to a loved one and saying, you know what? We haven't talked in a while, but I want you to know how much I love you and care about you. Because in a year where the majority of people said that it was dark, we have an opportunity to experience light and to share that light with other people. And that light that lights up the dark only comes through Jesus. And my hope and prayer this holiday season is that you really get the meaning of what this means in your life, in your spirit, and that you follow him with every part of who you are. And one of the ways that we're going to celebrate that this evening is to be able to partake in communion together. Now, this evening, we're going to do that a little different. And for you guys who are online, many of you stopped and got your bags that has all of your goodies and things, and you have communion there. And normally, we would have a time of reflection, and you get to, everybody kind of takes it on their own. But we're going to take communion tonight in each part together. And so before we get to the bread, I want you to take out your communion and simply open up the bread, but don't partake in it yet. And as you do that, I want to read these words as we guide into a time of reflecting that Jesus is the reason that we have this life. We praise our Heavenly Father and thank Him for His grace through the birth and the life of Jesus. It is through His life and through His Son that we are brought to God. We take this bread together as we remember Jesus' sacrifice. Open your juice at this time, and I'll read these words. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to use this gift worthily to confess our sins to be confident in belief that we are forgiven through Jesus' sacrifice, God's Son, our Lord. We celebrate this gift to us as we drink this together. Would you pray with me? God, in a holiday season, celebrating the birth of your Son, May we reflect on our lives, on this year, and find what truly matters. And it's not the things, it's not a, a tree or the decorations, but God, it's your son, Jesus, that came to light up the darkness. May we be forever reminded of the beautiful truth that he is the only one that can do that in our lives. There is no thing, no gadget, no gift, no job, no spouse, no friendship that can take away that God-shaped hole other than Jesus himself moving in our lives through the power of your spirit. God, during this Christmas season, let us 
drill down and remember what matters. And that is always and forever been your son. And it's in his name we pray together. Amen. Hey, we're going to sing as we close uh, a few uh, traditional carols, and you're going to notice the lights are going to come down and um, as we sing together, because we want the focus to be on our voices and the words, so I'd love to invite you to stand and sing along with us.
tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Man, I want to thank you guys uh, for being here. And there's a couple things for you guys online, for you guys in the theater, and for you guys uh, in here. We want you to know uh, how much God loves you and how much this church loves you. And as we head into the new year, we want to be able to celebrate together. Uh, but a couple dates we want to bring to your attention. The next two Sundays, we are online only. Uh, we have a team of volunteers who has jumped through an amazing amount of hoops uh, to do all of the PPE protocol and a staff that has worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic. And I'm going to give them some time to just be in their sweatpants and eat a lot of food. And so uh, we're going to have two online weeks. And then on January 10th, we will be back for in-person and online services but for you guys online, you already got all of your goodies in a bag through the drive-thru. But you guys, we have some special bags for you to enjoy some holiday treats at home. And so we have one bag per family, and they are outside under the tent by the bike rack. And until we see you again, we wish you a Merry Christmas, a really Merry Christmas of joy and hope and an amazing new year. Until we see you again, we love you, all you guys online and on campus. Peace.